Right. Hello, everyone. Um, so I just wanted to first off say happy holidays and happy new year and things like that. We just had our, our last class of the year right before the holidays start. Uh, and I just wanted to take advantage of the fact that I'm out here uh, and somewhat moving around that uh, I want to continue on from the last thing I did, which was remember holding a stick. So holding the cane, remember I talked about having one to two punyo, uh, one or two fingers of punyo showing in order to make sure that um, I had the most range on my cane, so I had the most control of the stick, and also had the least susceptibility for getting the punyo getting used against me or getting in my own way. So what I want to do to talk about today is striking with the cane. I'm going to try to keep this short, but there's three major aspects and a, and a couple little tweaks that I want to talk about. So if you're holding the cane correctly and we want to do long range striking, normally I'm considering that we want to strike with the last fist area-ish of the stick. It's not hard and fast, but you want to use that end area of the stick for, uh, for, the, for the range, the speed, um, and the power all at once to get the optimal uh, use. There are things kind of belly strikes, there are punching with the stick, there are of course the punio strikes, but right now we're just talking about the end of the cane strike, so keep it at the end of the cane, okay? The tendency is to come in here a lot of times, and that feels good, but you lose a lot of range, um, so might as well get used to putting it towards the end of the cane, and hitting uh, with the best range and still keeping the same power. So mechanics have a lot to do with that, but anyway, so this is where you want to end with uh, the striking surface. You're going to hit with that part of the stick at your targets, okay? Typically hard things. For the other end of things, what I want to always have to do is the, normally the break, I'm going to brace my strikes with the palm of my hand so that my palm is looking at the strike on contact. So if I do a forehand strike and I hit, my palm is going to be looking at the cane. So the, basically it's palm, cane, hitting surface. Okay. Same thing on the backhand strike. It's going to be looking at the strike. Okay. The other way to think about that is these knuckles that are on the front of your cane are really telling you what part of the cane you normally want to hit with. I want to hit with the front of the cane, or also if it was a blade, it would be with the, the sharp, dangerous side, okay? So, when I put that through, I'm always pointing through that. And, and the other aspect of that is when I hit, if I'm following through, I don't want to turn it too early. I want to make sure that palm is behind it until it's passed or through, and then turn it over when it's safe, so I don't hurt my grip and I don't hurt the weapon if I got a, a sword. Same thing on the other side, I want to strike, all the way through, turn it over when it's safe, okay? I don't want to turn it over in the middle. I don't want to turn it over in the middle. You'll see that a lot when people go fast. Try to avoid that, it's bad mechanics. On the backhand, it's really obvious. If I turn this over, I'll lower it so you can see. If I turn this over and I hit like this, I'm basically putting pressure against my thumb and I'm doing a disarm. Same thing on this side. If I turn it over in the middle, then I'm putting it against my fingers and it's a weak grip and I can knock it loose, okay? So put the palm through the strike, put the palm through the strike. For a sword, it's a little easier to see. We're going to talk about just chopping motions with the sword for this because that's what matches the stick. If we're talking about painting or slicing, um, there are some other options and things to think about. We're just talking about chopping right now. So if I'm chopping with the sword, I point it through, it's chopping through or slicing until I'm safe. Okay, then I turn it over. Same thing here. If I point it through, boom, I'm slicing, chopping. I, once it's through, then I turn it over because I don't want to go bing, hit with a flat. That's bad. I don't want to go bing, hit with a flat. I will break my sword. I will bend my sword. It won't be much of a sword uh, for me in, uh, in an encounter. So I don't want to do that. But again, the mechanics are what I'm really talking about now. So brace your strikes with the palm. So we talked about my hitting surface, the end of the cane. I talked about having my bracing surface be my palm. I'm looking at the strike with my palm. Don't hit with like this because now my hitting what's looking at the force is my fingers or my thumb not so good so turn it and put your palm behind the strike okay all right lastly is the path of the arm when we talk about the path of the arm I'm going to talk about two extremes first because I don't want you to stick it either to the stream and then I'll show you where I like to be in the middle and you can decide you know where in that realm you want to be um, so one extreme all wrist <laughs> if I extend my arm and I just do all wrist, it looks like that, okay? If I'm hammering something, remember we talked about penetrating with power, that's like a hammer. If I'm hammering something, I don't put my arm out there and go hammer, 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 hammer. No power, okay? Yes, it can look pretty fast, but I just got no power, okay? The other thing that happens there is that if I extend and I really try to extend and go through, I put my wrist in a bad position. It doesn't want to straighten all this way, and it also tends to make my shoulder in a bad position. I don't want to do that. I don't want to get disarmed. I don't want to, to disarm myself. So don't straighten your wrist all the way. So don't do all wrist. 
and don't straighten your wrist all the way like a cast. Okay, that's a weak grip. It's also a very vulnerable grip and bad structure up here. Okay, so that's one extreme, all wrist. We're not gonna do that. The other extreme would be all shoulder. I'm not gonna do that either because this should look pretty silly to you. Even if I'm gonna step into it, put a lot of force and bend the elbow just a little bit. One, it's really big motions, <laughs> easy to block and jam. And two, it actually moves fairly slowly. Because I'm powering it here, this is at the end of where I wanna generate power. If you're whipping a towel, you have to whip it, right? If I wanna make it go fast, or the way a whip works, it generates power and passes it all the way through as it extends. Same thing with the cane. If I just do it here, there's no way I can go fast. I can only go as fast as the strength of these muscles allow, and actually it turns out that the shoulder's not very strong. So what do I wanna do? I wanna be in between those and treat it like a cascade, a cascade of unfolding, like a whip. Um, but I do wanna remember that I'm penetrating into the target, so that's where the brace comes in. So for, for a low strike, I'm gonna start my shoulder. Actually, I'm starting at the hips and everything, but let's just keep for upper body right now. Starting at the shoulder, going through the elbow, going through the wrist and not extending all the way and then continuing through until it's safe to turn over if I follow through. If I don't follow through, I'm just gonna go there and back, okay? So one, two, three, one, two, three, and back. One, two, three, one, two, three, and back. Or one, two, three, and through and turn it over when it's safe. Same thing on the front side. Twist torso legs, like I said, we're gonna talk, talk about the upper body bar part. So shoulder, elbow, wrist, continue on through, turn it over when it's safe. So it looks like it's unfolding and then penetrating like a hammer. So unfold, penetrate like a hammer. Unfold, penetrate like a hammer. All right, make sense? So, striking surface, bracing surface, and then mechanics. Use your whole arm, okay? Don't use all wrist, don't use all shoulder. Use something in between that gets you the penetration that you need. You need to penetrate into the target. And your angle of attack will somewhat determine what the relative ratios of unfolding are for those. Okay. If you're close in, it might be something different. If I'm far away, it's gonna be a big, long thing, okay? Okay, so play with that. Make sure you use your whole arm. Don't forget your lower body, because that's really where all your power and your bracing is. But I just wanted to talk about here, because this is where I see people go wiggling the stick around. Don't do that. If you're gonna hit, hit. All right, good. Well, we'll see you next year. Hope you had a great holidays, and um, I'll try to do another one of these at, the, at some other class in the future. All right, take care.